the wicked man flee while no man pursueth but the righteous is bold as a lion You will always have these three advantages over a dishonorable individual if you are a righteous person. And these are three big advantages, so you should always best them. But let's get into it. The first advantage is in order to be a righteous person, this requires a level of courage. A level of bravery, a level of boldness. And guess who is not brave? Guess which individual is typically a punk? The wicked individual. And some of you have a flawed mis uh, a flawed conception of what a wicked individual is. Some of y'all think that certain types of people are wicked because they're rugged. What some of y'all would say, toxic masculinity. Some of y'all would probably say that. Some of y'all may mislabel that individual or those individuals as being wicked because they have certain characteristics that you associate with street dudes. But with some of you guys don't truly understand is a person can be very wicked and be very passive. They can be very wicked and not seen that way. On the surface, they seem very gentlemanly. On the surface, but in their character internally, they are wicked. So don't let the superficial fool you. The first advantage that the righteous man has over the wicked. The righteous stands for something. In order to be a righteous person, you have to be principled. You have to have principles. You can't be a man that bends and falls and you're always changing it up. You're switching it up. You're not consistent at all. You're a fake man. You don't stand for anything. These are all signs of a wicked man. All of this. And when you display cowardice in the way that you conduct yourself, when you're that sort of man, you do not attract many allies to you. You don't have people that don't know you that well, but like what they see that want to help you out. When you're a cowardly individual, you don't have as many people, as many allies that you can call upon because of all of your coward-like con conduct. People don't see you in a respectable manner. You have a bad reputation. All of this ties to cowardice. All of this is stems from coward, from being a coward. This is where all of this stems from. You burning all of these bridges with people. He's afraid to stand on something. Because when you stand on something, you will be scrutinized. You will be criticized when you stand on something. And in order to maintain integrity, there are going to be people that will have issues with you. In order to maintain integrity, you have to be willing to fight. You have to be willing to be in conflict with people, to stand on your principles, because there are people that are not going to agree with your principles. And it takes a level of courage and bravery to stand for something. So the fact that the righteous individual is not cowardly, that is, first advantage that they have. Second advantage the righteous has 
over the dishonorable, the unrighteous. The second advantage is the righteous don't have to scheme in the darkness. We don't have to go behind closed doors. We don't have to have secret meetings. We don't have to go in back channels. We don't have to hide our movements. We don't have to scheme and plot in order to strive for what we want. We can do what we want openly. We don't have to create elaborate plans in order to trick people out of things. We don't engage in that sort of thing. We don't have to set up other people in scenarios and traps that they fall into. We don't we don't do we don't have to waste time in life plotting on other people. And most plots involve other people to begin with. So there's a lot of behind the doors planning that these individuals have to do in order to further themselves. They gotta do a lot of sneaky shit. They gotta do all that. They have to put effort into being a snake. You see, when you're a sneaky, cowardly individual, you have to do a lot of things that people don't see in order to try to manipulate your way into getting what you actually desire. You can't be direct. You see, a righteous person can be direct. We can be direct. We're not fearful of the truth. We can tell the truth. We're not scared of what's gonna happen if we tell the truth. Those that strive to be righteous. Those that don't care about striving to be righteous, the dishonorable ones, they, they are fearful of everything. They are, they are fearful of all of their plots and schemes not working, not panning out. All of the planning that, that goes into their sneaky behavior, they're fearful that they won't be able to obtain what they really want. They're always afraid of not being able to get what it is that they really want. They're afraid that the tricks won't work. Which when you scheme in the darkness, see what you plot in the darkness always comes to light eventually. So when you're doing a lot of sneaky stuff behind the scenes that people don't see, just know that eventually it'll come out. It'll come to the surface eventually. And the dishonorable ones, they think that they are smarter than everybody else. They think they can hide their movements and that no one would have discernment to see what they're doing. That is the arrogance of the dishonorable ones. That's how they are. They think that you cannot, you cannot accurately discern their movements just because you don't see them. I don't have to see everything that a person does in order to recognize an individual with suspect character. I don't have to see everything that you do. All you need is, a, is to be highly observant and have a good memory. That's all you need. That's all you need to discern a person's character and watch them over time. That's all you gotta do advantage that the honorable ones have, the righteous ones, the ones that strive to be righteous have over these dishonorable ones, the advantage that they have is we don't have to scheme and plot and hide our movements and we don't have to plan these scenarios with the hope that it will that our secret plans won't be discovered. We don't have to worry about that sort of things. We can operate plainly. We can be direct. We're not fearful of being caught. We're not fearful of, oh, oh, oh snap, they figured out my plan. Like we're, we're not afraid of people figuring out our plans because we don't hide our plans. And the third advantage that the righteous man has is you cannot predict his movements he can predict what you're going to do but you cannot predict what he will do and the reason being is 
the reason why the righteous has this advantage over the dishonorable ones, the ones that don't care about being righteous, a righteous person knows wickedness. He knows what it is to be wicked. He knows what it is to have wicked temptations. But the unrighteous, the dishonorable ones, they don't know what it's like to be righteous. You see? And there is an advantage in you knowing how someone else lives and what someone else may do and what tempts other people, but they don't know what tempts you. They don't know what it's like to be on the other side, but you know what it's like to be on their side. And to truly be righteous, you have to have had that temptation put on you, in you. And you have to make an active effort to not engage in certain things. That is what makes you righteous. The temptation is there. The opportunities to be dishonorable are all over the place. They're all in your face, but you choose not to engage in it. And this is why the righteous can predict what the, what the wicked will do which gives them the advantage on them. The righteous can predict what he will do, but what the wicked will do, but the wicked cannot predict what the righteous will do. The wicked is dumbfounded at what the righteous does. Confused, it doesn't make any sense to him. Oh, there's no money in that. Why, why would they do something that, that, why would they invest time in something that there's no money in it? And I'm not saying that anyone that has those thoughts is wicked, but you are a person that does not understand a righteous individual. If you were just dumbfounded by why somebody would do something and there's no monetary gain behind it, or there's no perceived monetary gain behind it, if you're confused as to why a person would do something and there's no possibility of getting laid behind it, you see, that's when you're a very worldly individual. When you're a very worldly individual, certain things that a righteous person does, you just don't get it. You're confused by it. You're like, why are they doing that? That's stupid. I don't get it. You see, but a righteous person, they understand that that's how you think. They understand that you view them that way. And they understand all the temptations that you have. But you don't understand the discipline that he has. The dishonorable over here, the righteous over here. And these are the advantages that the righteous has over those that, not, that do not strive to be righteous.